Okay, uh, hello everybody. Um, I'm sorry for not streaming last night. Uh, I know I'm supposed to do Marvel Mondays every Monday, but uh, as I said last week, it's hard for me to care about streaming when I know nobody's going to watch anyway. So I figure I'd just shoot this as a video again. Again, I apologize for that, um, but you know... Anyway, we're here now, so let's talk about the latest episode of WandaVision. Boy, am I excited to talk about this, because... Oh man, with, with every episode, they keep, uh... <laughs> they keep adding more and more things to talk about. So, uh... The episode, uh, starts like a... A normal, uh, sitcom episode, like how the first three episodes did. Um, so I was basically right about, um... How they were gonna go about with this uh, last week I said that they were probably gonna return to the formula that they had before with pretending that the show is a sitcom but now that we, we have confirmed that it's <laughs> obviously not actually a sitcom um, but rather an alternate reality that Wanda has created inside of this town called Westview they're gonna shake things up a little bit and we'll be sh uh, shifting perspectives um, going back and forth between uh, Wanda's reality and the real reality. Um, uh, so, the episode starts uh, like a typical sitcom, except instead of doing uh, the title intro and everything at the beginning, we, we see, you know, a little bit of the be the beginning of the episode, the intro sequence, if you will, like how shows back in the day used to do. And then, you know, after... That, that little bit of the beginning plays, we get the uh, intro. Um, the lyrics of the, of the song are uh, actually <laughs> very important because uh, they're, they're pretty much describing exactly more or less what Wanda is doing, you know, because they talk about, you know, making it up as we go along, and, you know, and stuff like that. And, and that's literally what Wanda's doing. She's, you know, more or less... Uh, creating things with her powers, you know, improvising and whatnot and, and stuff, you know, she, she's literally making things up as, you know, this new life that she's created for herself goes along, you know, and, and Agnes, I'm pretty sure, knows 100% what, what, what's going on, you know, and she's just, you know, playing along because when she comes over to, um, you know, help with, you know, the babies that, Wanda gave birth to in episode three, um, you know, she, she just happens to come at, at the right time, knows exactly what to do, you know, um, and, you know, she's just trying to play her role, you know, so to speak, but uh, Vision um, goes off script, so to speak, um, and, um, you know, <laughs> asks Agnes not to help, uh, because he's overly concerned uh, about the babies, and um, when that happens, you know, Agnes uh, pretty awkwardly asks if, you know, if they want to, to start that part over, you know. <laughs> and so it's a bit of an awkward moment, and of course, Vision brings Wanda aside for a bit, asking, you know, what was going on there? What, what, what just happened? Uh, and, uh, Wanda's just trying to tell Vision, you know, everything's fine, Agnes is just trying to help, you know, nothing weird happened just now, and stuff like that. And, uh, as Agnes is, uh, taking care of the babies, uh, all of a sudden, you know, things grow silent, and, um, next thing you know, the, the kids are not all grown up, but, uh, they're not babies anymore, they're, uh, kids, um, you know, uh, post-toddler uh, age kids, so, <laughs> I'm not sure how, how else to say that, um, but yeah, um, they, they suddenly become kids now, and, uh, Agnes says, uh, something very interesting, she says, kids, you can't control them no matter how hard you try, and <laughs> that, 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 that to me is a, a very important line, because it's more or less signaling that, um, Wanda doesn't actually have control over her kids, and obviously they can control uh, their age because not only did they just go from babies to kids, but later on, um, and I'll get to this later, it, they go from, you know, kids to um, older 
kids. Uh, I'm not really sure how else to explain that. But I'll get to that later. Um, so then we 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 go to uh, Monica um, being scanned after her experience inside of one's reality. She describes what it's like. Says it was painful. You know, felt like drowning and, and stuff like that. Uh, she could feel Wanda's feelings of grief and whatnot. You know, she she said, you know, it's all Wanda who who's doing all of this, and uh, so uh, so one of the theories that uh, was going on, or, or at least that I saw, was that um when when Monica was in Wanda's reality, that um the times when she became uh. Well, I suppose it, it was only one time, and it was just before she got thrown out. But basically, um, when she became uh, more or less aware of what was happening and um, asked Wanda about um, Patrio, uh, Wanda's brother, who died in Age of Ultron, um, that was her regaining her consciousness and, uh, you know, more or less be becoming aware of herself and knowing what she was doing. You know, because when Wanda started to um, talk about her brother, she um, lost focus of controlling her reality, which allowed Monica to regain control of herself. Now, I thought, you know, when Monica got absorbed into Wanda's reality, that um, uh, that for whatever reason, she was just playing along with, uh, you know, this world that Wanda set up for herself, you know, and, um, <laughs> she realized that she slipped up when, um, she started asking questions about Wanda's brother, um, but now it is confirmed, uh, that, uh, she actually, uh, was completely under Wanda's control, uh, during that entire time, and that, um, her asking about Patrio was, um, her regaining control of herself because Wanda lost focus of her control over her reality. Um, <laughs> and I was actually su surprised to um, see that, that that's actually what was going on there. Because uh, I, I, I thought for sure that um, since Monica was not an initial hostage, uh, so to speak, of uh, Wanda's reality, that um, she was more or less aware of herself, which is why she needed up to make up a fake name for herself, uh, when Wanda asked for her name, you know, the first time meeting, uh, during episode two, uh, but as it turns out, uh, what's actually happening there, I, I'm assuming at least, is, uh, uh, you know, because she didn't have a life there previously, obviously, because it's a reality that Wanda made up herself, um, she didn't have a name previously, so thus, um, when Wanda asks for her name, she just comes up with the name Geraldine, you know, because, I don't know, I guess that's just how, Wan you know, I guess Wanda created the, the name for her or something, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that, 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 that explains, uh, what's going on there. So, uh, something else to note here, um, as I mentioned before, Monica Rambeau in the comics is, uh, first she was the, the second Captain Marvel after the original one died, but later became to come known under the names of Spectrum, Photon, uh, and, uh, Pulsar, uh, not in that order, um, but, um, so she, uh, has powers, um, basically similar to Captain Marvel, and, uh, I'm pretty sure she has her powers now, because when they scanned her, they, they say it came up blank, um, but if you actually, uh, look at the, uh, the, the scan that they did, um, it just shows, uh, Monica's body as pure light, so I'm pretty sure that means that Monica has her powers now and she just doesn't know it yet. Uh, so obviously, um, that happened as a result of her being inside of Wanda's reality, which, um, kind of raises questions about what the hell has, uh, happened to everybody else that has been inside of Wanda's reality for so long, you know, like, like what kind of effects, um, are going to take, uh, effect on those people, you know, once they get out, uh, assuming they do, I mean, 
we don't really know how any of this is going to end other than the fact that it's going to have a major huge impact on the MCU as a whole and uh, yeah it, it's going to be something for sure um, but yeah we don't know what, what kind of effects um, Wanda's reality is going to have uh, on these people other than, than what we've been informed of um, in this episode um, which I'll get to later so um so Tyler Hayward, the, the, the director of S.W.O.R.D., um, we met him in the last episode, um, he is confirmed to be the antagonist of uh, this show because when they have that big meeting um, describing the situation after Monica's return, he is he vilifies Wanda by describing uh, the events of Age of Ultron and Civil War as... Um, acts of terrorism and stuff like that, you know, basically labeling her as a, as a villain. And, um, Monica defends her, you know, says that she doesn't believe this is an act of aggression or anything like that. Then we see footage that we, we didn't see before, which is of Wanda, uh, storming, a uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters to steal Vision's body. Um, now, um, we actually didn't know what happened to Vision after Infinity War, um, so I'm guessing what, what happened is that sometime after the events of Infinity War, S.W.O.R.D. Um, recovered Vision's body, and I guess they were, you know, disassembling it to analyze it and whatnot, you know, um, for what reason, I'm not sure, probably to maybe rebuild him or, or whatever like like obviously they wouldn't be able to because you know without the mind stone they can't but maybe they could build similar robots or, or something i don't know it, it's a mystery you know what they were doing with vision's body disassembled it would be one thing if they kept it purely for preservation purposes but the fact that it was uh, in pieces uh, when wanda went to recover it um raises some questions about what they were doing with it in the first place. Um, so yeah, um, they show the footage uh, of Wanda taking Vision's body out of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, headquarters, and um, that's all we really know from that footage, right? That's all we can confirm for sure, that, that she went there and she took it by force. But we don't really know what else is going on there, like why she's doing it. I mean, obviously she's doing it because she wants to bring Vision back to life, but we don't know, you know, if she's doing this on her own, or if she's being mind-controlled at the time, or if somebody influenced her to do it. Again, we don't know any of that. All we know is that she went there, and, you know, she stole Vision's body, and, you know, her motivations for doing so remain unclear at this time, um, beyond wanting to bring Vision back to life. Um, so back in Wanda's reality, the kids uh, have, have brought a puppy that they apparently found home. Uh, and um, just as they were talking about, you know, whether or not if the kids keep it, Wanda just, I mean, Agnes just happens to walk into the house with exactly what they need yet again. You know, again, she keeps popping up, you know, at, at points where they just happen to need her. And then, you know, she, she gives them what, what they need, you know, so she's definitely aware of what's going on, you know, and, and is more or less playing her part, appearing where she's needed and, and such, you know. So, yeah, she, she's definitely uh, aware of what's going on and, and um, you know, to, to, to further explain again, you know, what Agatha Harkness, that that's her name in the comics, um, you know, she's Wanda's mentor who, t who taught her how to use her powers to the fullest extent in the comics, you know, and that's basically who Agnes is, so, you know, yeah, it, it's hard to speculate exactly what's going on here, but Agnes is definitely... Definitely the one who, who more or less taught, well, like, 
Yeah, I, I can't say for one hundred percent certainty. Like, like she influenced Wanda to to do all this or whatnot. At at the very least, she she must have been at least trying to teach her how to control her powers or or, or something. And um, when this reality was created, you know, she she must be capable of something that makes her immune to Wanda's mind control, at least enough that um, she's able to, like, like she's, she's more or less doing what Wanda wants, but she, she's not being controlled by Wanda. Like it, it's hard for me to explain, but, but, uh, yeah, um, she, she is definitely 100% aware of what's going on, and, um, <laughs> um, which is, which is why, um, she said things that she said so far, like, you know, that was in the details line, which hints at Mephesto, but that's pretty much the only thing that, that hints at him. Um, you know, she keeps talking about her husband, Ralph, who we still haven't seen yet, you know, and, you know, again, showing up at convenient times with exactly with what Wanda and or Vision need at any given moment. So, um, there is a, something else, um, that, that also needs to be discussed here regarding Agnes, but uh, again, I'll, I'll bring that up later. So, uh, back to the scene that I was talking about, um, when Wanda and, uh, Vision have a discussion of, <laughs> okay, so, um, when Agnes brings the doghouse, um, she, she decides to let the boy, uh, she, meaning Wanda, decides to let the boys keep the dog, and she materializes, uh, a dog tag out of thin air, and Vision, you know, oh, excuse me, Vision, you know, talks to Wanda, saying, you know, you just did that in front of Agnes, you know, how could you do that? You know, I thought we were supposed to be concealing our powers, you know? And, um, <laughs> so Wanda more or less tells her that, that she just wants to do whatever he, she wants and doesn't care about hiding their powers anymore, which Vision disagrees with, but then their focus shifts back to, um, the discussion about whether or not the boys keep the dog, and, um, Wanda decides that they won't be old enough, to, they're not old enough to be responsible for caring for a dog, so um, they tell them that um, you can't care for the dog until you're 10 years old, and then the boys age themselves up, which, of course, you know, you know, obviously they, we, we already discussed how they, they demonstrated the ability to control their age, but now, you know, previously when they went from babies to kids, you, you could argue that Wanda did that subconsciously or, or whatever, you know, well, otherwise unintentionally, but, um, when the fact that they, that the kids looked at each other and then they immediately aged themselves up, you know, that shows them that they're the ones doing it and not Wanda. So definitely it's, it's possible, like, like, I'm pretty sure Wanda created her kids herself, but, uh, the children are the ones that are in control of themselves. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like they're Wanda's kids, but um, but uh, Wanda can't control them, as Agnes said. Um, so uh, yeah, that that's that's going to be interesting. Um, uh, to see how how that part plays out. Um, because you you know, I mean, what's stopping them from aging themselves into full grown adults? You know, or old men, you know, and, and then of course, you know, what, what comes after being an old person besides death, you know, so, you know, what's going to happen there? <laughs> I don't know, huh? but, but one thing's for sure, uh, those kids are not speed and wicked like I thought they were. Um, I'm not sure if they're really going to go along with the whole, you know, the kids are actually part of Mephesto's soul from the comics, but, um, could be something similar to that, but, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I, I, I can't say with 100% certainty that they're going to do something along those lines, but, um, uh, 
Yeah, it's this is definitely one of the more interesting parts about WandaVision because uh, I can't really say I know for sure uh, how that's going to play out. Uh, so, um, back in the uh, real world, so to speak, um, the sword is discussing uh, how are they going to get back inside um, the hex, which is... Uh, what they're calling it now, because uh, apparently uh, the perimeter of the reality that uh, Wanda created inside of Westview is uh, in the shape of a hexagon, which is a shape that's come up a lot in the show, actually. And uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what the significance behind it is. Like, like why, why is the hexagonal shape so prominent in this show? Like, I'm not really understanding the purpose of that, you know? Maybe there's something there that I'm not seeing, but to me it's just a shape, so I don't know. You know, I, I'm not really seeing the purpose for the hexagon shape, but, you know, I mean, it's obviously an intentional choice that they're making, so it's got to mean something, right? For now, it just escapes me what... what the significance of the hexagon is, but uh, yeah, Wanda's uh, reality is more or less called the hex now because of the hexagon shape of you know what the reality is more or less contained inside of. Um, so yeah, um, they're discussing uh, how they're gonna get back inside, and um, Monica mentions a, a space engineer that she knows that that would be good for the job. Uh, she doesn't say the name, though, so obviously it could be anyone. You know, obviously it has to be a character that we've never met before, otherwise they would have mentioned the name. I don't think that they would have, you know, made mention of whoever this is unless it's a new character that hasn't been introduced into the MCU yet, and, uh, you know, people... I've seen people say that, uh, it's probably Reed Richards, but I, I don't think it's going to be him. You know, assuming that, excuse me, we actually see whoever this space engineer is uh, in this show, which I don't think we're going to, or at least I don't think so yet anyway. Um, it, it's very unlikely that it's going to be Reed Richards or anybody Fantastic Four related at all. Uh, you know, to me, that's just wishful thinking on, on people's parts, but... um. At the same time, you can't really deny it either because of the big thing that happens at the end of this episode, which, oh boy, I'll, I'll get to that. But um, yeah, they're, they're definitely, obviously, hinting at a new character here, and uh, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing who it is once they're revealed. Um, oh yeah, um, there, there's also a little bit of fun banter uh, that they have. Uh, during this scene where they talk about how Wanda almost killed Thanos entirely by herself, you know, and if it wasn't for Thanos uh, calling for a uh, barrage from above uh, <laughs> while Wanda was ripping him apart, then she definitely would have killed him. And um, <laughs> Jimmy Woo makes a comment about how Captain Marvel could have uh, killed Thanos by her herself as well. So... Basically, what they're trying to say here is uh, only somebody with the power of an Infinity Stone could have killed uh, Thanos, at least entirely by themselves, you know? So, that just goes to show how, how, how powerful Thanos was without the stones, that uh, at least one stone was needed in order to kill him or somebody as powerful as an Infinity Stone, you know, and, and Wanda, you know, at this point is, you know, as powerful as an Infinity Stone, like, like, way more powerful. She She's basically the Infinity Gauntlet herself now because she obviously can control the minds of people, you know, she's had telekinetic powers forever. She has control over time now, as we saw from her interaction with the beekeeper, which uh, we still don't know what happened to that guy, by the way. So uh, chances are he's probably become a uh, permanent citizen of Westview now. You know, so she's more or less 
a living infinity gauntlet for all intents and purposes at this point, right? Like, she's just insanely powerful now. They, they even say that in the show, like, like, if she can control, if she can, you know, like, change matter because they confirmed that she could, like, Monica, um, goes to the outfit that, uh, she wore while she was in there, you know, when she was thrown out, and, uh, she shoots it a couple of times, and the bullets flatten, and, and the outfit is undamaged, and that's how they more or less figure out how they could get inside uh, Wanda's reality. They, they, uh, uh, Monica figures that, um, if they send in something that doesn't require, uh, you know, because anytime something enters the hex, it, it changes based on, uh, the, the, the reality. So, so, you know, that, that's why, you know, the, the wire that the beekeeper guy was attached to, you know, the end of the rope, uh, or whatever it was, whatever you want to call it, you know, it, it changed into a, a jump rope thing, or, or whatever, you know, which is why it detached and, and why it came back without him, you know, so it changes. Yeah, 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 the, the helicopter drone that they shown it earlier, it, it turned into a toy helicopter, you know, so they figured out that um, if they send in something that doesn't require that it needs to be changed, then, you know, th they'll be good. So, so that's when they decide to send in a... Uh, I, I think it's like a 80s tech drone or, or, or something like that. It, it, it's, it's something that, that... It's a drone, but it's built off of, you know... It's like made of material that, that you know, would allow it to maintain its shape and, and use this technology from the 80s and, and whatnot, you know, which is why they get a poor signal, you know, from what they're observing inside of one's reality. Um, oh, wow. Okay, so I actually uh, made a big mistake uh, with my notes here and forgot to bring up what happens next. Uh, well, it's fine, because what happens next, you know, comes up naturally in the conversation anyway. So basically, um, Monica tries to talk to Wanda um, through this drone that they sent in, and um, it doesn't go well, to say the least. Um, we, we see Wanda's eyes turn red like they did in Endgame, and uh, she basically destroys the drone. Um, Monica didn't know that the drone was armed, and uh, uh, Hayward, uh, against Monica's wishes, decides to have the drone fire missiles at Wanda, and uh, just before, you know, like, as soon as the order was called, uh, the drone gets destroyed. And then they have a... Wanda exits her reality um, to, to meet with S.W.O.R.D. directly outside of Westview. And um, she basically warns them, you know, this is going to be your only warning. Don't bother me again. And I won't bother you. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, they, they ask her, you know, what she wants. And she says, I have what I want. You know, and so um, that calls back to um, her line to Thanos in Avengers Endgame when um, she tells him, you know, you took everything from me. And um, <laughs> so, yeah, th this is basically, um, this is a show about... Wanda basically giving herself what she wants after everything that she lost up to this point of her life. Um, so, I'm actually looking forward to making a video talking about the deeper themes of WandaVision, you know, after the, the, the show has ended and whatnot. Um, because that's actually, um, unintentionally or not, that's actually a commentary on how people who experience traumatic events, you know, it could lead even good people who have traumatic events happen in your life, lead them to do bad things, you know, might even make them feel entitled that to um, living a happy life and whatnot because they, they've just been through so much trauma that they just want to live a happy life for once, you know, you know, that's what's going on here with Wanda, you know, she, she's tired of 
all of these terrible things happening to her, you know, her parents died, her brother died, you know, she's been vilified um, because of the events of Age of Ultron and Civil War, and, um, you know, and now Vision's dead, so she brought him back to life and created her this reality of hers where she can live the life that she wants now, you know, so, yeah, that, that's, that, that's, that's pretty much what's going on here, but again, th th there's more to it than that, that, um, we don't know of yet, like, like, how this all got started in the first place, but, like, what, um, made Wanda realize that she had the power to alter reality to, to begin with, you know, but there's still a lot of mysteries here, but we, we more or less uh, know Wanda's motivations for, for doing all of this at this point, so uh, that much we know. Um, so uh, in, back inside uh, Wanda's reality, um, we see a scene where Vision's back in his office, and uh, we see everybody getting these <laughs> you know, big computers, basically, you know, like, like, really old computers, like, the kind of computers that they had back in the 80s, obviously, because that's the era that this episode is taking place in, and, um, they actually get, um, a sword email about, or Wanda's reality, they, they, they call it the Maximoff, uh, uh, anomaly, um, and, uh, when, when, um, when Norm, uh, that's Vision's co-worker, when Norm reads it, um, everybody in the office collectively reads it together. So evidently, you know, everybody got this email. Um, we don't know who sent it or anything like that. I don't think there's a name attached to it. Um, but the fact that um, everybody reads it together um, is uh, kind of creepy and... Um, you know, they, they treat it like it's a joke, and, and uh, Norm even outright says, you know, none of it is real. And um, Vision does something to his brain. He, he puts his hands on Norm's head and uh, somewhat puts them slightly through his head. Like, I'm not exactly sure what he does here, but, but he touches Norm's head, and then Norm suddenly comes to, um, you know, more or less becomes the person he originally was before Wanda created her reality. And, uh, you know, he's panicking, he's saying, you know, I've got a family to take care of, uh, where's my sister, uh, I have to call my father, and, you know, saying all this stuff, you know, concerned about his family and how Wanda's inside her head, uh, uh, his head, um, you know, and, and all he feels is pain and whatnot, and, and he begs Vision to, to, to make it stop. Um, before uh, Vision quickly um, restores Norm uh, back to Norm. Uh, Norm's not his real name, by the way, um, but that's not important. Um, so yeah, um, Vision manages to have a brief talk with the real Norm, um, so to speak. Um, um, oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I forgot to mention this. Um, <laughs> So after the scene with um, Wanda uh, and Sword out, outside of the Hex, um, we see an ad for a uh, Lagos uh, brand um, paper towels. Um, Lagos is the, the, the place in Civil War where the incident happened where Wanda accidentally kills some people in a building trying to divert an explosion away from people on the ground. Um, and... Um, so one of the theories um, that was going around was that the ads, the in-universe ads in WandaVision were representative of traumatic events in Wanda's life. That theory is now 100% confirmed um, because of this Lagos ad. Excuse me. Because they even outright say in the ad for when you make a mess, you didn't mean to. You know... Wanda didn't mean to kill those people in, you know, Lagos. She was just, you know, trying to do her best, you know, uh, to, uh, like, you know, so the situation was Crossbones had, had, you know, a bomb attached to him. He set it off, you know, as he was being held by Captain America. You know, she, she 
was able to stop the explosion from happening just long enough to get him away from the people who are on the ground. And, you know, there, there's nowhere else that she could have sent him besides up. And, you know, of course, there, there just happened to be, you know, a building in front of where this was taking place of. And, of course, the explosion kills the people inside the building. So she was just trying to do her best to prevent people from dying. But people died anyway, you know. For when you make a mess you didn't mean to is obviously in reference to this event that happened, you know. So, the, the ads representing traumatic events in Wanda's life, that theory is 100% confirmed uh, because of this episode. Um, <laughs> um, I can't say with 100% certainty still that uh, Hydra is not involved to, to, to some degree at least because, again, we don't know whether or not if... Wanda was being mind controlled or influenced when she took Vision's body from Sword Headquarters. Um, but um, because it's confirmed that the ads represent traumatic events in Wanda's life, I'm pretty sure um, Hydra has nothing to do with them outside of the fact that they're referring to things that happened previously in the MCU. Um, so. Um, Back inside Wanda's reality. Um, oh yeah, uh, this is another thing that I, uh, I meant to mention. Um, <laughs> during the entire time when 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 Wanda's talking to to Sword outside of Westview, I'm actually curious as to what is happening inside of Westview during that scene, because Wanda's not there, um, but. She has to have something in place so that she can maintain control of her reality while she's outside of it. So I'm pretty sure she did something like time is frozen inside of Westview while she's out of it. I don't know. We, we obviously didn't see what happened inside of Westview while Wanda was outside of it. So it's definitely a curiosity, you know. It's something to think about, you know, like like what happens inside of Westview when when Wanda, when Wanda isn't in Westview. You know what I mean? And, and we we already established that she she can't control her kids. Uh, so, you know what what's going on with them while um, that scene is happening? You know, the fact that uh, her kids didn't come outside of Westview with her is uh, interesting. You know, to say the least, considering that um, she apparently has no control over her kids, uh, at least not in the same way that she does uh, everybody else in Westview. Uh, speaking of which, um, when we get back to uh, Westview, um, so Sparky uh, ran outside the house uh, when Wanda and the kids went to uh, look at the drone that Monica was talking to them from. Uh, so. So, they, so when, she, when Wanda comes back in, they're, they're looking for the dog, and uh, apparently Agnes finds it near her bushes, and excuse me, apparently uh, the dog ate some dead leaf flowers that, that killed it, and uh, the kids start crying, and, you know, they, they ask her uh, to bring Sparky, that's the dog's name, back to life. Um... <laughs> And, uh, th this scene, um, um, Wanda tells her kids, uh, not to age themselves up again because they, they, they can't run, um, from their feelings and that, um, you know, there's rules to life and, and you can't break those rules. But, uh, Wanda's obviously, uh, not practicing what she's preaching because, uh, you know, she created this entire reality, you know, for herself because she doesn't want to face the traumatic events that, um, she has faced in her life, you know, <clears throat> and whatnot, so, yeah, she, she's definitely being a, a huge hypocrite right here by, uh, telling her kids, uh, that you can't, you know, alter reality and stuff when, when here she is doing it herself, um, but, but the kids do mention the fact that Wanda can bring people back from the dead, which is what they literally ask for her to do. Uh, to Sparky. They said, you can fix him. You, you can fix the dead. And uh, 
Agnes uh, hears this and uh, she seems to be surprised by the fact that um, Wanda is able to uh, bring people back from the dead. Like she actually sounds like she didn't know that that Wanda could do this. Um, so that's interesting. Um, so then um, it's, it's around at this point that uh, Vision comes along and, and hears about what, what happened to the dog and then um, back home, um, Vision tells Wanda uh, that he had the talk that he had with Norm back at the office and um, he starts uh, asking her all kinds of questions. Uh, actually, um, I forgot to mention earlier, um, when Wanda and the kids are, are looking for the dog, the, the mailman says, you know, um, Wanda wouldn't let the dog get far, which uh, is referring to the fact that she's in control of her own reality, you know, and everything that goes on in it. So but basically what that line means is um, nobody's allowed to uh, leave Westview. Uh, so thus, um, you know, obviously the dog can only be inside of Westview uh, because, you know, Wanda's keeping everybody there, you know, so, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, but anyway, as I was saying before, um, uh, Vision, uh, tells Wanda that he had a talk with Norm, the real Norm, and, um, they actually almost fight, uh, Wanda and Vision, uh, because, uh, he now knows about the, the Maximoff now, the S sword calls it, and, um, Vision starts asking Wanda all sorts of questions, like, why are there no children in Westview? Um, you know, what's outside of Westview? You know, what was my life before Westview? I can't remember my life before Westview, you know, all, all these questions. And, you know, they actually almost end up fighting, you know, each other. And um, Wanda basically just denies everything, says she's, she's not in control of everybody's lives, which is a lie, you know, obviously, you know, Norm said, you know, she's in his head, Monica said she's in her head, you know, Wanda is obviously, you know, controlling everything here, and of course we have confirmation from Wanda herself because she said, you know, she has what she wants, which means that, you know, she's the one who's doing everything here, you know. But she does also say that she doesn't even know how, you know, Westview, um, that is to say Wanda's reality, uh, got started in the first place, which I also think is a lie, but at the same time, I can kind of see that being true. Like, it's entirely possible that, um, th this actually did happen, not of... Wanda's own will, like, she was mind-controlled into, uh, creating this reality and then stealing Vision's body to resurrect him, and then, you know, she started this new life inside of her own reality, or maybe she did do it all on her own, and then her memory was wiped, or maybe she even wiped it herself. I don't know if there's a bunch of possibilities for... Uh, her saying that she doesn't know how Westview started. Um, so it's one of those possibilities, or, you know, she's just lying about that as well. <sighs> okay. Now we've come to the big one. The, the big moments. The, the moment that everybody was talking about after uh, the, the latest episode of WandaVision came out, so... I've been, uh, I've been waiting to get to this, uh, oh boy, okay, so, at the end of the episode, um, after Wanda and Vision have this talk about, you know, her controlling this reality and her denying everything, the doorbell rings and she says it wasn't her, uh, and Vision doesn't believe her. She goes to answer the door, and who is there? Pietro. Quicksilver, Wanda's brother, is the one who rang the doorbell and is there right now. Now, that that's that's one thing. Um, the, the the reason why this is big is not because it's 
but her brother that that's back from the dead or whatever. It's this Quicksilver is not the same one that we saw in Age of Ultron. It's the Quicksilver that we saw in the Fox X Men movies, played by the same actor as the Quicksilver from the Fox X Men movies, Peter Evans. <sighs> Oh my God! This this is such a, 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 a major moment for the MCU. Like I, I I can't even begin to describe just how significant this is right now. Like, like this is big. Like like I said, okay. What I said last week was, um, because we saw what Vision actually looked like, um, in Episode Four. That, that, that he's not, you know, the way that he looks, that as we see him on the show, he's actually the, the corpse that he became after Thanos stripped out the Infinity Gem in, in, in Infinity War. You know, that's his actual form, you know, that his actual appearance. Um, so if Quicksilver comes back, we know how he's going to actually look as opposed to how he's appearing to look. But now... Um, you know, okay, so it would be one thing if, you know, if it was the same Quicksilver from Age of Ultron, you know, who came back, you know, that would confirm what, what I said, more or less. But the fact that it's the Quicksilver from the Foxman movies? You know, I, 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 I don't know what to make of that. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Like... And the thing is, too, like, 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 this is, this is the, the, the Quicksilver from the Fox movies, because, uh, when, when, when the, when, when S.W.O.R.D. is monitoring, uh, you know, watching the broadcast, you know, and, and, and they see Quicksilver on the show, Darcy says, you know, Wanda recast Pietro. So that means that this is, in fact... A different person, but Wanda recognizes him as Quicksilver, her brother. So I have no idea, you know, what that means whatsoever. You know, if this is, if this actually is the um, the Quicksilver from the Foxman movies, then you know. How did he get inside the MCU? Like, like, how did he get here? Who brought him here? You know, you know, like, I honestly don't know what to make of this. This, this brings up so many questions that I can't wait to have answered because this is actually very exciting because it could mean that, you know, like, this is basically laying the groundwork for the X-Men coming to the MCU, you know? So... <laughs> I'm very excited for, you know, what's going to happen on the show next, as well as what's going to be happening in the MCU going forward. Um, uh, one last thing uh, to talk about, um, one last piece of speculation, because of uh, Quicksilver's return. Again, we don't know the circumstances behind it, uh, but, um, yeah, like, but we don't know if this is actually uh, Wanda's brother back from the dead or, you know, the actual Quicksilver from the Fox universe being brought into the MCU, in which case, you know, why would Wanda still recognize him as her brother? But uh, anyway, um, if Quicksilver can come back, then does that mean that Wanda can bring her parents back as well? Because she very well could if she can bring her brother back. You know, again, we don't know how it happened, but it is possible now that her brother's back that her parents can come back. You know what that means. Magneto in the MCU. So, yeah, I honestly don't know if it's going to happen, but, you know, the fact that the possibility is there now, and we know this for sure, man, it's got me excited. <laughs> man, uh, oh man, like, like, I know I said, you know, the previous, in the in the previous discussions, I said that each episode has made me more excited for the next one than the last, but, uh, man, like, like, I'm so excited for the next episode that I, I need to see it right now. Like, I need to see episode six literally right now. Like, I, I wish I was already watching it. Like, that's how excited I am for the next episode. <laughs> uh, but, 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 um, 
but yeah, uh, that, that's uh, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to talk about um, with uh, episode five. Um, I'll try to stream uh, my my discussion on episode six next week. Uh, again, I'm sorry I I didn't do this live, um, but uh, yeah, assuming everything works out, I'll I'll see you guys Monday to talk about episode six. Man, I can't wait for it. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Twitch with notifications turned on so you can know when I go live. And uh, yeah, like I said, everything works out next week. Uh, I'll see you there. So yeah, see y'all. Bye.